Good morning, retailers, and welcome to our GTS uh, Retailer to Publisher webinar, today featuring Yellow and their excellent new game, King of Tokyo Dark, uh, a new edition for the King of Tokyo line. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with us, if you haven't been to one of our GTS webinars before, my name is Scott Bohr. I'm the category manager for gaming uh, specialty products, which includes game accessories like dice, uh, RPGs, and miniature games. Normally, Scott Morris would be handling uh, some of our board game side of things, but he's in the process of moving uh, in the midst of everything else going on. He's adding another, another burden to himself by moving, and uh, he's not able to join us. There went Scott. Bye, Scott. So we're taking over. <laughs> <laughs> this so Scott, I... Oh, now Scott's Did back. You... Am I back? You just froze. Oh, okay. Weird. Uh, okay. So let me follow up with that again. Uh, so uh, in case you're unfamiliar with Zoom and, uh, and our process here, there is a way to interact with our presenters by hovering over your video screen, uh, and that will bring up a, uh, a chat when, or a, a selection bar down at the bottom. One of those is the chat. So you just click there, and a chat window will appear on the right-hand side of your screen. You'll be able to type messages there, uh, and you'll have options to either um, communicate with all panelists or all panelists and attendees, and then everyone will see it. So without too much further ado, uh, I will go ahead and introduce uh, Stefan and John from Yellow Games, and they'll be talking about King of Tokyo Dark, uh, some of their other upcoming launches, as well as their retailer support program. So without further ado, I will pass the virtual microphone over to Stefan. Hi guys, thanks Scott. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, joining us today. So uh, it's, I think it's our second time doing the, um, the little uh, GTS video. Um, so we'd love to uh, be able to uh, communicate with you and talk, talk to you about the new stuff. So today we're gonna talk to you about our four recent release, which are King of Tokyo Dark, Break the code, crack and attack in the lucky line, flying goblins, and finally, what is my stay cool? Stay cool. There you go. Love my Kallax. So, um, but before I do that, I wanted to mention um, uh, what we are doing to try to support you guys because. We are in uh, dire times with the dang virus, and um, we are trying to do everything we can to uh, support you guys. So um, most of you I recognize um, are part of the Yellow Retailer Tribune, uh, our Facebook group. If you are not, I strongly, strongly encourage you to join. It's called the Yellow Retailers Tribune on Facebook. It's a private group with uh, currently about 500 and some change retailers. 520. 520 indeed. And um, this is our best medium to communicate with you guys. Uh, we are uh, making announcements, talking about new stuff, uh, asking your opinion when we want to do a new program and you have an opportunity to tell us if it's a great idea or if it sucks and we should do something else. Um, so anyway, that's a very good uh, tool for us. So um, the operation we are doing for supporting the retailer is that for every sale that happened on the yellowusa.com website, the consumer have an opportunity to put in the comments uh, a retail that they want to sponsor. So they put the name of the store and the city, and then we will share uh, the net profit of the sale 50% with that store uh, via PayPal. We will send you a PayPal payment like I run them uh, daily. Um, as of today, we have uh, shared about uh, something like $1,500, something like that. It keeps going up. So make sure to mention it. It's on our website. There is an announcement on the top uh, banner. Uh, share that with your patrons so we can help you if your store is closed. Um, so that's uh, my introduction. Um, again, as Scott mentioned, you can uh, chat with us in the, the Zoom webinar chat and we'll see your question and try to answer. As Scott said today, uh, I'm joined uh, with John Stevens uh, to, uh, to uh, moderate that, uh, 
that video chat today. Uh, John is our retail liaison, so most of the time you will be dealing with him when uh, you are interacting on our uh, social media or when you are um, asking questions about product or anything like that. I also want to remind all the retailer on that, um, although you have access to us uh, for direct order and things like that, um, our key partner for our sales distribution are our distributor uh, in USA, Alliance, ACD, and GTS. And so uh, please um, walk through them. It's better for us. It's more efficient for us. And it's also strengthening the partnership we have with, we have with our distributors. So um, <clears throat> that was that for uh, the intro. So let's talk about uh, King of Tokyo Dark. So King of Tokyo Dark, we uh, did an early release um, uh, because of uh, all the events happening with the virus and everything. Um, we talked amongst ourselves in the, in the team and we decided that uh, the earlier the game will be out, the better it will be for, uh, for everybody. And um, I don't know if you saw uh, Ryan post this morning, but uh, the game in March is number five in sales by dollar at GTS and number eight in sales by unit. So it's doing quite quite well. Uh, if you are not familiar with this, it's a <clears throat> new edition of uh, King of Tokyo with some twists and some edition. So this is what it looks like on the shelf under the shrink wrap and that little sleeve goes away. So you can still do your usual, put it on the side um, on in the front uh, as we always do. But then once the consumer gets the game on their shelf, they have a beautiful collectible item. So we did only one print run of uh, this game. Uh, most of it already arrived in our warehouse and we have st we still have about one as a container left in China that I haven't brought because I didn't know if the, the arbor could bear it. So we have still a little bit left of the sprint run, but we will not reprint that game. So I expect it to uh, becoming a real collector item. So what's special about King of Tokyo Dark? Well, we already talked about the special cover. Um, and then all the treatment of the product is, I don't know if you can see on the video, but there is, ah, oh, there you go. So there is some shiny varnish finish on top of it. There is also some embossing, um, like here, it's, it's hard to show on the camera, but this is actually uh, punched down. I can, I can feel the groove, it's, it's, uh, it's embossed. Okay, and the entire game is processed like that. So this is the new board with also a varnish finish on it. And you can see on here, we have what we call the wickedness track. So this is um, the twist on that version of the game is that we have those weaken, wickedness powers. They are double-sided and we are laying them down next to the track on spot number three, number six, and number 10. And every time you roll three ones, you move your marker. It's very difficult to do it <laughs> reverse. Every time you roll three one, you move your marker up the track. When you arrive to three, you can draw one of those weakness power and add it to your monster. And when we roll, we, you roll three tools you move once. Okay, so that's uh, the new mechanic in the game. Um, all the monsters are getting a new treatment in terms of design, again, with the shiny finish. So this is the dark version of the Kraken. This is the dark version of the King. This is Gigazor. So new artworks. Uh, this is Mecha Dragon, Kraken, and back by popular demand, Cyber Bunny. So this is another specificity of the, of the, of the game is we are bringing back some uh, beloved old monsters. Um, then the dice have a different treatment in the sense that they are translucent. So those are your regular dice. And then your extra dice for extra heads are even more transparent. And it's hard to tell from the video, but they're considerably larger than the old King of Tokyo dice as well. They're a great big chunky experience. That is true. And then finally our uh, markers, our token for 
gas and poison and things like that are a little more elaborate. And I don't know what happened to my lightning bolt. Uh, but the power, another one. There it is. The energy tokens are actually a little like lightning bolts. So oh, I dropped it. So one question that is, is one question that's come up in the chat is whether or not the King of Tokyo Dark Edition is compatible with the uh, the standard editions of Tokyo and, and New York. So that's always kind of a complicated question because much of what's in a box of King of Tokyo is cosmetic. Monsters are a cosmetic thing. So if you want to drag Dark Cyber Bunny into your regular game of King of Tokyo, go for it. But there are not power-up cards for those particular Dark Monsters. And the backs of the cards in the deck are different. Stefan had a card with him, I believe. Yeah. So this is... So also... The treatment is different, they are darker, but the back is with a lightning ball, which is not the king of Tokyo. So if you want to mix, you can, if you want to use the power up or the Halloween expansion with your king of Tokyo dark, you can sleeve your card. That's a way, this way you won't, you won't care about the back. And although there is no specific power up for the dark monster, we have a concept which is called family or category. So for example, the alienoid is an alien. And so you can use the power up that have a little uh, alien face on them. They are compatible with all the aliens. So this is also a way to mix and match. So with this as a special edition, there's, there, I imagine there's probably not a plan to release a dark edition of the power up um, expansions correct no not at the moment uh, and all the no. all the monsters in dark edition if i'm correct have been released previously in either the um, original edition or the second edition of king of tokyo yes yes okay so all the question uh, that's it Okay, someone say, I'm a member of the Retailer Tribune and it has been very useful staying up to date on items. Awesome, that's awesome that uh, uh, it's useful. Okay, so any more question about King of Tokyo Dark? GTS, have it in stock. So uh, make sure to- uh, Stefan likes to show you. things off. I like to talk about selling points. So when we're talking to our consumers about this, it is a single print run limited edition product. We're never going to do this again. It also is not a reskin of King of Tokyo. This is not the same game of King of Tokyo you've been playing. The Wickedness track and the Wickedness powers both incentivize us to keep roles that we would have thrown away before. We're going to keep those three ones because we're chasing those Wickedness powers. They also change the way the game plays. So every time I'm selling this to consumers in my store, it's about a new experience, not the same one with the different art treatment. Thank you, John. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's uh, switch to another game that I'm super excited about. So this is called Stay Cool. It's from our buddies at Scorpion Masque. They do the crypto, they do zombie kid evolution. Uh, we are their main partner in the USA. So Stay Cool is a cool little party game. And um, I suck at it, but it's one of those games where I'm terrible, but I love playing it. Go figure. So what do we have in the box? We have, let's try to do a better job at presenting. So this is the content. We have two types of questions, the greenish teal cards and the reddish teal cards. We have five dice with letters on the side and a uh, stand clock. So you need at least three people to play that game. One player is going to be on the hot seat. It's going to be, that person is going to be answering question and trying to stay cool. One player is going to read the question on the teal card from top to bottom. And the question are, for example, how many, how many letters are in your family game, the family name? And so the player need to answer verbally those questions. So 
uh, B-R-I-S-S-A-U-D, my answer is eight. So John is asking me how many letters are in your family name. And so I have to say eight. That's easy. Now, the second player is reading the question on the red card. And those are, for example, it makes honey. And the answer is B. And so I'm going to have to spell B with my dice while John is peppering me with those questions. So what I'm trying to spell B, E, E, so I have to, spend, to spin my dice to find where the B and the E and the E are. John is like, how many letters are in your family name? How many letters are in your family name? What does this city have in common? Berlin, Mexico City, Moscow. They're all capitals, et cetera, et cetera. So basically the game is calling on the right side of your brain and the left side of your brain all, all the, the sudden and you get analysis paralysis which is already challenging but on top of that we put a sun timer and so the sun timer we're gonna flip it um we have that little card right here one two three four and we start the sun timer on the spot number one once it's over we flip it to number two three and four so during one round we're gonna we're gonna play that sun timer four times so that's the first time the second time the second round you play, same thing, we start on the one, but now the player in the hot seat, so the person who is answering the question, has to flip the timer themselves. If you forget to flip it, you you stop the game. So you have to keep track, keep on top of answering the question and playing with the dice, you have to keep track of your time. And then the third round, which is wicked, is we are, you still have to manage your own timer, but now we are hiding it from you. So you have to remember about how long is the timer. You've been seeing that timer eight times now. So you have to estimate, okay, and you have to tell flip and someone is gonna flip it behind the screen for you. So that is, stay cool. Um, and it has been released already. John, do you have any uh, anything to add? About oh, you covered cool? that one well. Good, for once. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, and the rules are pretty simple. I mean, again. Well, we've been able to demo this in 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and as usual, you know, they do a very good uh, uh, graphic treatment of the product. Uh, the back of the box is a very good, uh, has a very good expansion. They have video um, uh, available. Shut up and sit down did a very good, um, cover of Stay Cool in, on, it was released on April 4th, if I remember correctly. Anybody has question in the chat for Stay Cool? Okay, well, we can always come back to it if you have questions. We'll rewind else as well. Somebody asked a question about the single print run for King of Tokyo, and it's, it's worth investigating because we tried something a little different this time. We went to retailers and to distributors back in October and said, hey, we're doing this thing. We're only doing it once. We're taking your pre-orders now. So we took those pre-orders from distribution. We took those pre-orders from retailers, and then we guessed. We didn't just order exactly what people pre-ordered. We guessed. We said, we want it to last this long. This is the number that that might look like. Now, my original thought process was we were going to sell out at Gen Con. Now the world's a different place. Who knows how long that will last? but it was a one-time print run that we ordered back in November of last year, based in part on pre-orders we received from distribution and retail. Yeah. And also for context, uh, USA is the place in the world where we printed the most uh, because we believe strongly in that game, but it is limited. Uh, there will not be a reprint. And once it's done, it's done. But, right. but there is some stock left so that if, if people need to reorder, we still have some availability of it. Uh, I know we have some in the warehouse that we can provide, but also if we run out, then there's still a little bit more left at yellow that we can dip into. Yes, yes. So, and as I said, they are... so if you haven't they already got it in your store, you can still get it in your store either through GTS or your retail support program would also be a good way for uh, stores to get that support as well. Yeah, and um, and um, also uh, worth mentioning. Um, 
some of you might know, might know that um, our warehouse is near the Alliance warehouse, and we are under the same executive order as they are that we cannot operate our order our warehouse in Fort Wayne, Indiana. However, uh, because I love I love to have Plan B and C. Just before um, we got the executive order, and uh, we we gather with the team and we figure out we shipped some inventory to two different places, one in Colorado and one somewhere else in Fort Wayne where uh, we are authorized to operate. So we have stock that we can uh, ship to the distributor and then you can get them. Uh, so I believe we have things. every new release in an alternate warehouse or my garage. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually John Garrett. Um, <laughs> Okay, someone say in the chat, uh, Alex Motor says, I'm excited for King of Tokyo. Later on tonight, our store is going to be showing it off during a Facebook Live since we are close to the pre. Okay, very awesome. Thank you. Please make sure to let us know when you go live, when you do these kind of things, because we have a few fans on social media. Uh, this is something we try to gather. So every time a retailer does something, if you, if you do a special operation, once the virus is no longer a problem, if you run an event in your store or demos or things like that, please let us know in advance. So Emma will include that in the marketing um, program and we'll relay that to our fans and it's going to drive more. Uh, and even more today, fun. before you go live, get me a link there so I can drop it in some of our Facebook and Twitter stuff. And because right now it's hard for us all to expose consumers to this product. So if I can use you to con expose consumers this product, that's great for me. And also, if you give, as John said, if you if you let us know uh, if I'm available or if he's available, we might just drop in your live and just chat with you. And um, I've, we've done that with a few retailers, and it's always fun for the for the fan to be able to interact with us. And usually, you can make fun of us too. All right. So, it, oh, very, thank you, Scott. Scott found the Shut Up and Sit Down uh, article about Take One. All right. Uh, let's move on to our next game. I love this little guy. So it's Break the Code. This is in our, so it's, it's, uh, it's an adaptation of a Japanese game uh, from Jelly Jelly Games. And this is our version. So we did a re redress of it and everything. So it's a, it's a deduction game. Oh, that's my friend's version. I don't have anything else here. Well, I guess, oh no, they are here. Uh, all right, same in English. Haha. <laughs> it's called Break the Code 2. <laughs> Funny. Um, anyway, so what do we have in there? So we have a little rule book, a little notepad. I'm going to go back to it later. To, and I will explain how it works. And then we have those, each player has one of those little screen that you're gonna hide your code. So there are 20 different tiles. You see there's zero to nine uh, in black and zero to nine in white with the five being green. Okay, so those are the digits that are available um, for your code. Each player has a spot A, B, C, D, and E, depending on the number of players behind their screen. So in front of each spot, you're gonna put a random digit. That's your digit. On a two-player game, I'm trying to guess your digit that is behind your screen. On a three or four-player game, each player has a four-code digit and there is a four code digit in the middle of the table. And the goal of the game is to guess that code that's on the middle of the table. How do we guess it? Well, remember I mentioned that we have that little notepad that's gonna allow us to take notes. So for example, on a two player game, I'm gonna write in this uh, information about my, my opponent here. On a three player game or a four player game, I'm gonna write information of each code of opponent that I think what I know about. And then here, I'm going to try to guess the code on the middle of the table. And so everybody can use that the way they want, but basically I scratch off the number that I know are not the code and whatever is left is the code. Now, there is a limitation about the way you inquire about the code. There are C 
six of those cards in the middle of the table, and there are pre-made questions that you must use. What is the sum of your tiles? Is your C tile greater than four? So meaning the, the digit that is on spot C, is it greater than four? How many odd tiles do you have? And so on. So by picking one of those counts, and asking that question to an opponent, I am gathering intel and everybody else is because I'm asking a question to John about how many uh, odd tiles do you have and everybody else around the table um, can, um, can take notes about that. So now there is one important aspect of the rules is that the way you sort your tiles behind your screen is that they must be in uh, uh, growing order, increasing order from left to right. So my zero and one, two, three, four. And then the white number, if I have two of the same number, the white number must be before the black number. So that's giving you another intel. If um, knowing those rules, it's helping you eliminate. So basically we go through the deck of cards, which is, how many cards are in there? 21 question. So we go to 21 question. And then at, once the deck is exhausted and there are no more questions, we make our best guess alternatively. So on your turn, either you, you pick a card from the six open on the table and you ask that question to someone, or you make a guess. If you are correct, you win the game. If you are incorrect, the player just tell you, no, it's not correct. And you continue playing. So that's break the code. Uh, someone is asking us to post a link to the Facebook page, the Facebook group in the conversation. John, would you mind grabbing that? That's not what they're asking, Stefan. It, it it's okay. Yeah. You, you, you talk and I'll read chat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, John, do you have something to add about Break the Code? I love that this is really three different games in the box and it's at a super low price point. Depending on the number of players, the game changes pretty dramatically from guessing your opponents to trying to figure out a common code. The people who are an ugh, the people answering the questions also changes. In a two player game, if I ask Stefan a question, only Stefan is asking that question. So sometimes I'm not picking a question because I want Stefan to give me that information. I'm picking a question because I want that question card to get out of the pile so that I don't have to give up that information. And that remains the same in a three player game and then you get to a four player game and now I have to answer every question I ask as well. So there's a different mindset to how I pick questions again because I wanna gather information without giving up too much of it. It's really a great look at an old classic deduction game that you might have played many, many years ago where we would say, well, one of your colors is right and one of your pins is in the right spot, but there wasn't a lot of information beyond that. Yep. All right, we have 17 people now. That's cool. Uh, all right. Did we address all the questions, John, in the... Yep. In the... All right, let's move on to our newest lucky game. So, so you guys might be familiar with that little dude right here, SOS Dino, uh, which is our bestseller in, uh, in the Lucky line. Uh, lucky is a, our, is, a, is a kid brand that we distribute in the USA. And um, so the newest one is Crack and Attack. And the first thing that cool first number one, there is there is a kraken in the window. Arr, that's awesome. Uh, it's super cute. I'm gonna show you closer. But what I really love is if you look at the designer, it's Antoine Bowser that you might know from Seven Wonders, Takenoko, many, many, many other games, but also Esteban. Esteban is Antoine's son, and actually uh, the story is uh, Antoine's son wanted to design a game like his daddy. And so he said, dad, help me design a game. And so Antoine said, sure. And they started working on a game. 
And at first there was pirates and ninja and space monsters and everything. So Antoine cleaned it up a little bit and it became, there was a Kraken since the beginning, but it became Kraken Attack. Another um, interesting piece of trivia, when I, when I got the first, pro, the first um, pre not even pre-production, when I got the first draft of the rules and everything, it was called Crack Attack. And I said, that is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't understand why, but uh, pretty soon they, they got it. The joy of working with a French company. <laughs> so what do we have in there? It's all in shambles, but um, so number one is our guest of honor, Mr. Kraken. is a mean little dude. Look at that. All right. So that's the Kraken. The Kraken Kraken. All right. So he's there. And what's going to happen is... Where's my bomb? While Stefan digs, Nobody let's moves. go through this. Kraken Attack is a cooperative kids game where we're all going to play as sailors or pirates or whatever you want to think of them as. And each of them is going to have their own ability. Stefan has cards in front of him that show what a pirate looks like and what their abilities look like. So we have guns and boots and cannons and swords and we're going to work together to defend wow i just pointed to the board on my screen we're going to work to, together to defend the pirate ship that we're on so that board lays in the middle of the table it has beautiful plastic walls that represent the walls of your ship they have the bastingage and they go here and they sit there then during our turn we're going to roll dice and the Kraken is going to start attacking from each side. So the Kraken is represented in the early game by the tentacles that come up the eight different columns on each side of the board. So we're going to work together to move our, our sailor through the different zones. We're going to use the dice and the abilities to try and beat the Kraken back from the ship. And depending on where the Kraken is on the board, you'll see icons Closest to Stefan is where those icons are at right now that show you how you can beat the, the Kraken back with the cannon, with the gun, or with the sword. And when the Kraken advances and runs into the boat, it's going to knock the wall down. And then it's going to go all the way back to the beginning again. And if it gets to that same spot again, it's going to put a hole in the boat. And those are represented by little hole tokens. Wait, wait, wait. I got one. <laughs> And after a certain number of holes are in our boat, we've lost the game. As a group, we've lost the game. So let's talk about how we win the game. One of the things we're going to be doing with the dice is we're going to be taunting the Kraken. And we have a little tracker that tracks how, how far the, the Kraken has been taunted. See the little taunt? It's a little kid taunting the Kraken. And then Stefan's got a tracker that shows you how far the Kraken has been taunted. You start from the deep. So the head, the head of the Kraken is going to move through that tracker, and when it gets to the top, it's going to take the place of one of the tentacles. And that Kraken... Oh, yep. More dice. As the game progresses, we add dice, which speeds it up and makes it a little more difficult. But once the Kraken is through the tracker, and we have all the dice, the Kraken head is going to take the place of one of the tentacles on the main board. And then we win by defeating the Kraken. And we defeat the Kraken by hitting them. Again, we can, we can push back the Kraken away in the deep by using those power. And every time we do, we put a little blam, kablam marker on the Kraken. Now he has one on his tentacle. And then we put another one. And then once we put three kablam marker on the Kraken, the Kraken go back to the deep. Ah, he lost. And then we win the game. We can't see both of you. Okay. Hope, um, hopefully you see Stefan and I'm a disembodied voice. So uh, in, the, in the interface of Zoom, you can click on the top left next to uh, the top right next to the timer. There is something that says speaker of you. If you click on speaker of you, it's zooming on whoever is talking. But if you put, if you click on gallery view, it should show you everybody who is talking. Or at least that's what I'm seeing from my end. I don't know if it's for the attendees also. Anybody more? 
Xavi and me and technology can infer. Did, did our little thing make sense? Or I know it's a little tricky to present up in the air like that, but. Uh, just to, if you just want to pull the board up again and, and do a little talking through, uh, just a quick review of the components. All right. So um, this is this is the game board, and then we put on top here. So this this is how you set it up. All right. So this is how it's laid down on the table. So the kraken is coming from the deep up here, and then making its way. Every time we taunt the kraken, making a grimace instead of having just a quiet island on the card. If you use a card with a grimace, you are making the Kraken move forward. We start the game with only two dice, a red and a blue. The blue side is that side, the red side is that side. So we have red tentacles and blue tentacles. And blue tentacles. The red tentacles are moving this way toward the boat, and the blue tentacles are moving this way toward the boat. Okay, on the boat, we have four sections. One of the kids can move in any section laterally, either like that, like that, like that, or like that. In order to move, you use one of your shoe symbol on your car. That's what the shoe symbol does. If you use the cannon, the cannon is going to activate, is going to shoot on the tentacle that is on the cannon row on either side. Okay, so if I have a tentacle here and I use my cannon card for the kid that is in that section that is controlling those two area, then I can push back that tentacle back to the deep. Okay, and as, as John mentioned, we have those walls. So we have one wall at the end of each row The first time a tentacle reach the wall, they break the wall and then they go back to the deep. The second time they reach the boat, they make a hole in the hull. And after three holes, the boat sink. Uh, once the Kraken reach the boat on the track. So every time the Kraken land on a dice, we add an extra die to our roll. So we accelerate the game. So now we are rolling three dice. Once the Kraken reach the boat, the Kraken take the place of one of the tentacles. And if it's uh, get the boat, we are uh, losing the game. And that's Kraken attack. Great. We've got the codes uh, for all the games we've talked about so far in the, in the chat window there. So you guys can take a look at those uh, and uh, make sure you get those ordered in to your store. Excellent. All right. Let me clean up a little bit. Yeah. The last game I'm going to show is going to be challenging to do in the air, but I'm going to try to do my best. Right. I'm going to put that on there. <clears throat> okay. Next thing I want to show you is the flying goblins. Look at the little dude. He's in trouble because he's, he's going to land. Is the cool release and already out of stock, or is it not yet released? It is released and in stock why do you ask if it's out of stock does does uh, gts show out of stock all right um <laughs> scott barry you need to uh tell james to send an order <clears throat> it'll be coming out yeah, of denver don't... scott yeah it will be shipped from Denver. Okay, uh, I will follow up with our team to get that taken care of for you. Yeah, interesting thing when uh, when we do our stock transfer, <laughs> I ask the warehouse to send a pallet, and if it's because it's a small game, <laughs> uh, they sent everything to. Uh, oh no, that's to that's break the code. No, that's break the code. That's yeah. break the code. That's right. All right, so flying goblin, flying goblin is a flicking. It is, a, it is a worker placement game, but you place your goblins on a catapult and you flick them into the castle. So it's a worker flicking game. Oh, let me switch my crane. So this is my catapult. 
and 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 no, look, look at those look at those little dude. Obviously, I always play yellow. I don't know why, but look at that thing. This is ah, my goblin died. I right, just right here. Look at this little dude. Isn't he cute? He's a goblin, and he died again. Those are very resilient goblins. And the little ones are fun to fling into the air, but really tossing the captain is the, my favorite thing. The big yeah, chunky goblin dude. Look at that. This is the captain. It's a thick goblin. All right. So you put them on your catapult. You flick them. Pop. There you go. All right. Well, where do you flick them? Well, the bottom of the box is your castle. And... In the middle of the game of the box, you put that tower right here. Okay. And this board is why I really describe it as a worker placement game. Everything I think about in a worker placement game is in this board. In a worker placement game, traditionally, we place our workers to gather resources and buy things and do stuff. Here, we're going to do that same thing. We just don't get to put them there. So there's rooms that give us coins. There's rooms that give us diamonds. There's rooms that change the way the game plays. We can rotate the box. We can steal from our friends, take their diamonds. It's all of the principles of worker placement in this box, but you don't get to place your workers where you want them. So yeah, the mechanic is everybody is playing together. So in a two player game, uh, we're going to put the table in the center of the table like that, and we're going to draw an imaginary line from that corner and that corner. The section here is your area. If you flick a goblin and it doesn't land in the box, but it lands on your side of the box, you can take it back and catapult it again. If the goblin fall on my side of the box, it's lost for you. You cannot send it again. We start with two goblins. Each player starts with two goblins. And once you are done flicking your goblin, you say, done. The first player who was done resolved the placement. So if I land in that spot, I'm going to get two money. If I land in that spot, they are not in the right place, but um, I'm going to get one money. The goal of the game is either to um, gather 20 points worth of diamond. So the big diamonds are five, the small diamonds are one. So the first player with 20 points of diamond is the winner, or you are trying to build your tower. And the way you build your tower is we have those little roofs on the board that goes at the intersection of the rooms right here. Okay, so that's a roof. If one of your thieves land on a roof, it gets a diamond. That's the only thing they do. They are expensive worker, but once you get them and you land them on the roof, they get you a diamond. If they fall in the room, you get nothing. But on those roofs, you can build your towers, and your tower is made of four little pieces. So this is the base of my tower. Yes, that's the base of my tower. And then I have the second level of my tower, the third level of my tower, and the top of my tower. If I manage to build that tower and it lasts one entire round without being knocked down, I win the game. But you can you can knock it down, and then I have to continue to rebuy the element. What do, what do I mean by buying? Each player has a, a recruiting template card. On the recruiting template card, you have the four pieces of your tower that goes here. You have three extra goblins that goes here. You have your two thieves and your captain. Um, in order to recruit, so each turn you get a free recruiting action included in your turn. So at the end of my turn, I can pay, for example, three money here to buy my first extra goblin. So now I have three, walking, three goblin soldiers. Next turn, I can buy for four another one. Also, every time I land in the room that is the armory, which is here, that's the armory with the little, it's, it's difficult to see, but it has the little symbol with the, with the flying helmet, like that, okay? Every time I land one of my goblins in that room, 
it goes here and it's giving me one extra purchase. So if I land my three goblin in the recruiting room, I can recruit three PCs from the recruiting board and next turn I play with them. Um, so again, goal of the game, 20 diamond or building your tower. Uh, there is another little caveat, the king, which is that little dude right here, is living on top of the tower right here. And if I, if someone knock down the king, they take that uh, extra power. And what it means is inside, when you land inside the tower, you get three diamonds. Like if during the game, I catapult one of my goblins inside the tower, I get three diamonds. But if I have the favor of the king, no, for landing in the tower, I get five diamonds. Once the king has been knocked down from his tower, we place it back on one of the roofs. From now on, anybody who knock down the king from the roof is stealing that special power from whoever has it. So it goes around the table. And that's pretty much the principle of it. So it's really silly. It's simultaneous. Everybody is laughing and throwing goblin all over the kitchen and running after them under the, the furniture and everything. And uh, it's really fun. And I don't think there is much other games like that on the market. John, do you want to add anything? I, I added stuff in chat. Break the code left the Denver warehouse to five different GTS locations yesterday. Okay. That's what we do at Yellow. You know, I play game and he works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. He plays Destiny, I work. He sleeps, I work. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is, and you know, there are lots of, it's silly the way we really like, uh, there are little graphics, like they are putting graffitis and people are stupid and goblins are great. And it's just a lot of fun. Uh, I played with my wife last night. It was, it was, it was a hoot. That looks like a fun little uh, dexterity game combined with worker placement. It's a good mix of yeah. mechanics, and it uh, looks like a fun game for. It is uh, also yeah. an amazing price point for that game too. <clears throat> yeah. Good. Excellent. All right. So uh, that's really what I wanted to show you guys today. Great retailers. Oh, can... Sorry. Go right ahead. Um, I guess I want to mention something that I, I'm not even sure if I can, but <laughs> whatever, you know, it's, <laughs> they can slap my finger. Um, so we have started doing national monsters. Uh, we have done, we have designed a two Canadian national monster, which I am not allowed to release, to reveal. Uh, but there is one for the, there will be an English Canadian monster and a French Canadian monster because why not? Uh, we are working on an American Canadian monster. It's going to be very America. Uh, and then uh, we've, been, we've done a lot of other monsters for the rest of the world. Uh, we're going to put them on the website as they are becoming available. But I just got a sample of, um, I don't even know its name, but it's the one for uh, Spain. Oh, I guess his name is there. It is. It is called. Oh, yeah, it's Chupacabra. So there you go. We are doing uh, this kind of, uh, of exclusive monster. So they are in partnership with our distributor. So this one is the one for Devia. Um, they're going to be uh, Geo uh, geographically uh, attributed. So uh, I think consumers are going to start chasing them around and it's fun. Um, and so, yeah, there will be one for each country where we have King of Tokyo translated and then uh, more more uh, as the time goes by. So just a little fun thing. Um, another uh, part of the, uh, the retailer guild, um, we have some exclusive products. Like for example, we have the, I don't know what they are, we have the national dice, they are uh, red, white, and blue dice, which they are French dice actually, but we let the Americans use them too. 
uh, <laughs> uh, they are red, white, and blue, and um, they are not available online. They can only be bought in retail store. So uh, uh, GTS have that in stock. You can order them. Uh, GTS has a list of retailers that they are authorized to sell them because you need to be part of the guild to uh, get those games, those dice. All right, what's happening in the chat, John? I'm looking for the marketing folder again. I hate Google Drive. Yeah, don't say that. Google <laughs> Drive is awesome. So just as a yeah, reminder, retailers, retailers, if you have questions for um, for Stefan, go ahead and type those into the chat window. You can get there by uh, hovering over the video, and that'll bring up your selections down at the bottom. You just click on the chat, and then go ahead and put that in there, and, and then I can, uh, John or I will bring those questions to Stefan. Um, Stefan, with those international, yep. with the international monsters, are those uh, going through your different distribution channels in each country? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll see the U.S. monster uh, at some point here and be able to offer that out to customers. Well, so actually, that's, uh, I haven't decided how it's going to be uh, available. Uh, I'm, as, as mentioned, uh, every time we do a special operation, we try to include all our partners, so that, that means our distributor also. Um, the same way you guys can sell the, the national dice to them, um, we're going to figure out something also where you are included, you have the product available. So, uh, because again, we want the sales to go to distribution because it's more efficient for us. Um, but I, we haven't decided exactly what, how we're going to use that. Uh, but it's just, I mean, I, I, we know the King of Tokyo fan love their monsters, uh, Every every promotional monster we do, we release, uh, people love them. So that's uh, that's another way to uh, create some buzz around the game and and uh, that. So uh, there is a question in the that I see about demo available for King of Tokyo Dark. Uh, yes, we are making demo available for Dark. Okay, I will make note of that. And John just posted the link to the folder of the Facebook banner. Uh, and, and I need to redesign the retail page on the website. I don't think it's very uh, user friendly and it's, um, it's a little messy. Um, it's on my to-do list, uh, but we're going to make the, we're going to make your, the retail page a little more uh, useful to find this kind of information. That's also, you know, we can, we can include that retailer links in uh, the YouTube presentation. So if, uh, mm -hmm. John, if you want to provide those uh, to me later by email, that's fine too. I can okay. get those and then uh, we'll make sure they go into the, the YouTube. Uh, any other questions from retailers? Please feel free to go ahead and drop them into the chat window there. Um, good to know that some of these games are available as demo copies. It's excellent. Uh, very helpful for once things get back to normal and people can actually start demoing games in stores again and um, so with, with the current circumstances, and I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot sort of here, but do you, do you have any games that you would specifically recommend from the Yellow Library uh, for remote play, playing over the internet or through Zoom or, or another um, chat? It seems kind of like Break the Code could work um, with the hidden information as long as both yeah. players or all the players had copies of the game. They could, they could go through and somebody could read the questions out. Um, from the table. Are there any others yeah. specifically that uh, you, you think? I think stay cool, stay cool, except that uh, you, 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 will have, you will need a timer on each hand because whoever on the third round, you have to flip your own timer. Mm. Um, but I guess you can just call it, you can, you can outscore it. Um, you could maybe set up a timer on your phone or, or something yeah. like that so that it's well the, the the idea is that you have to flip the timer you have to guess you have to know the timer okay. so it's, you, you have to run that 30 seconds in your head because you're not allowed head, to yeah. see the timer in the last round yeah that makes sense so Derek Froman has a very good question the retailer group that you have mentioned that has access to exclusive item is that your Facebook retailer group or a different group um uh, <laughs> so it is a little different. So we have what we call the, actually, I'm going to let John talk because it's his baby. It's my baby. It is my, Stefan and I were talking, uh, God, at this point, I guess it's almost two years ago about the success my store has had with Yellow. 
and whether or not we could duplicate that. So I did a survey and then I wrote a study of that survey that was entirely too long. It was about 20 pages of survey analysis. And then I wrote like a six page program that was confusing for everybody. And we got all excited about it and rolled it out last year. That's the Yellow Retailers Guild. And the Yellow Retailers Guild doesn't seek to measure you based on your sales. It measures you based on what you're carrying and how you're engaging with our brand. So carry these things and get these things, do these things, get these things, rather than sell stuff and we'll help you out. So we rolled out this program with three different levels and all of these complicated things involved in it. And then nine months later, we went, oh God, this is confusing. So we're redesigning that program right now. And my hope is to roll out a finalized version of that sometime between Origins and Gen Con or in that time period. But the Retailers Guild has had a couple of things that were exclusive to it. Uh, an early release of a couple of products and a couple of products that were Retail Guild only. Stefan might have dice behind him that are red, white, and blue. So depending on which side of the pond you're on, we refer to them as the French national dice or the U.S. national dice. But they're oh, red, white, and blue dice. King of Tokyo dice. And that was a product that was very limited print quantities and exclusive to the Retailers Guild. If you're interested in the Retailers Guild, you can email me. It's just john at yellowgames.com, and I can send you the current program and talk to you about some of the changes that we've already made to that program and some of the changes that I expect we're going to make. But ultimately, if you carry a certain amount of yellow product and you engage with us in a certain way, mostly through social media, are you taking photos of yellow product? Are you featuring yellow product on your demo table? If you do that engagement with us, then we'll stick the Retailers Guild badge on your, your store locator spot on the yellow website, and we'll give you access to those exclusive products. I don't know where my national dice are. Uh, sorry, but uh, it's a little, uh, if you go to the website, actually, um, I, I, Scott, if I may, I would love to uh, share my screen and show some stuff about the you. yellow website. All right, so let me go to yellow. Yellowusa.com, oh, there you go. I had to yeah, get up and leave my office. <laughs> Blurry. But yes, it's a set of six King of Tokyo dice in red, white, and blue. So they are, we are not allowing them to be sold online. Um, Through third-party yeah. sellers. Yeah. You may sell them online on your store website. Yes, but no, yeah. no, no marketplace. Stefan, if I may, we, we are kind of running up against the, the clock. We've got our, our hour and we're just a little bit over. So if, if people need okay. to drop off, they should feel free to do so. But if you, if you want to sure. go ahead and share the website, um, I, we can do that for a couple of okay, minutes. Okay, cool. I just want to share real quick. Uh, so this is the yellow website right here. And by the way, real quick, this is the Tribune. This is, the re this is what you are looking for in the Facebook group, the Yellow Retailers Tribune. Okay? And everybody can see that I was watching last week tonight on YouTube. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is, uh, what I wanted to show you is the, the store locator that we are using. So we have a store locator that is um, a classic store locator and all that. This is my city and there are stores here and when you click on them, it's telling you the website and the direction and all that. But um, uh, if I go to Los Angeles, then I have, oh, I have Turn Zero Game, um, which is a gold retailer. So that's how you will get highlighted as part of the uh, retailer guild. So number one, if you are a guild store, you're gonna show up uh, first in the in the sorting and also you see where it says here yeah, it says see what's in stock and if I click on see what's in stock I get a more um, advanced uh, screen and I can browse their stock and I can see that they have a big book of madness in stock for thirty nine ninety nine and in Jatezen in stock for fourteen ninety nine etc 
if I click on it, it's going to tell me that it's available in the store. The store is currently closed due to the virus, but if it was open, I could call the store now. Depending on the way the store has set up their system in the store locator, they can, we can also have a button here that says buy now for pickup. And so if your store is set up for that, the consumer click buy now, they pay, the money goes directly to you. It doesn't even stop in our website. We are just a gateway to your POS system. Basically what it does, we are synchronizing with your POS system. So we read your inventory. They pay you directly, you get the money, they come pick up the game in store. Now, let's, that's one of the first interesting aspects of that store locator. Another interesting one is that if I look for Legion of the Cherry Tree in, my, in the Yellow USS site, and I click on it, hopefully it's gonna remember that I'm in Los Angeles. Yes, so see what it says, find it locally here. So this is the actual page of the Legion of the Cherry Tree on the Yellow website. If I click on find it locally, it's telling me that turn zero games 4.2 miles from me as it in stock. And again, I can click on there and it's gonna bring the information about turn zero game, where it is on the map and they have the game in stock. So this is free for all the yellow retailer. In order to be in there, you need to go to locally.com And then you go into, at the bottom it says, um, retailer service, I think. It's under it? retailer and brand login. Oh, it's retailer and brand login, thanks. But it's so gonna auto can... log you in when you click this button. But under retailer and brand login, you'll find a spot for you as a retailer to set up an account. As you follow through the process of setting up an account, it's gonna ask you what brands you wanna be linked with. When you say yellow, I sell yellow, then they email us and say, hey, is this person an authorized yellow retailer? We click the yes button, you arrive in the store locator. All right, so another way to get there quickly also, if, if you click on the retailer tab in the Yellow USA website, um, here, that's the link to sign up for free. Okay. And this is where I was saying that I'm gonna make that page a little more user-friendly for you guys. We're gonna add the, the link to the resource for the assets and the Facebook banners and all that kind of thing. Uh, but there is information here. Okay, that's really why I wanted. So again, it's free. The signing up for local is free. You will, um, you will see, uh, you will show up in our uh, locator. And then if you, if you synchronize, you have two options. You can synchronize with an API directly with your POS system. So it's seamless, you don't have anything to do. Or if your POS is not part of the API of Able one, you can upload a CSV file. Yeah, John is in this situation. You can upload a CSV file, uh, but it expires every two weeks. It expires every 48 hours. Really? Yeah. Oh. That is why my own inventory is not currently available through locally. <laughs> oh, well, oh. oh, well. Anyway, yeah, so this is another. Yeah, that's another an of the things we try to to do for to support you guys. It's an excellent uh, store locator system that you've got set up there, and I I would encourage all of our retail partners to, to go ahead and sign up for that. Uh, we want to. There's no new questions in the webinar chat, so I think we'll go ahead and and wrap things up. We really appreciate. Uh, your time, Stefan and John, and we uh, particularly Pleasure. appreciate the time of our retailers. We want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to be here. Uh, we know you've got a lot going on, a lot to get through. Uh, so let's all stick together and get through it together. Uh, we're hoping, you know, for a return in, to a new normal in the in the near future. Really hoping that helps out. So uh, keep playing games, find those opportunities. Uh, curbside pickup, delivery, whatever you have to do to, to make those sales. We appreciate uh, your continued support of, of this program. Um, we want to thank you guys for being here today, and we'll turn the rest of your day back over to you. Uh, I'll let, go ahead and let Stefan and John say goodbye as well. well thank, thank you, you for Scott. having thank us, Scott. Um, you yeah. don't have to wait for us to do a webinar. You can get us all the time in the Facebook. You can get us all the time at emails. Our emails are first name at yellowgames.com.
and I'll add that to yeah. the YouTube video as well. Yes, and um, yeah, um, we are uh, glad uh, we are able to communicate with you today, and thanks for GGS to invite us. Uh, we always uh, love those opportunities, and uh, everybody stay safe, uh, weather the storm, and we'll uh, we'll get on the other side of this together. All right, thank you guys. Take care. Have a, have a great rest of your day.